Well, this flute right here is the modern silver flute, also known as the Western Concert Flute. And it's the flute that one will most likely see if you go and hear an orchestra play today or go to a flute recital. It's very common. Um, many people learn it when they're young, and it's what most professionals play. It's usually made out of silver. Mine here is made out of silver from here down and platinum from here up. But many other people have ones made out of gold. And you can also have uh, these flutes that are made out of, the tubing is made out of wood with the keys made out of metal. This flute is, is incredible because it's a very complex mechanical system. You can see that there are over 20 moving parts here. You've got rod, springs, keys, everything works in conjunction with each other to create the most consistent sound on each note. And that's really what it's known for, being able to get a very smooth tone from the low register through to the highest notes of the instrument. What interested me the most about playing the Baroque flute is being able to play the music that composers like Bach and Vivaldi and Handel all wrote on the instrument that they intended it for. I mean, you can see it's, it's a really different instrument to the modern flute. Almost everything about it is different. It has only one key, is made out of wood, and each note is created through various finger combinations over these six holes, which creates very different sound to what most people are used to with the modern flute. And as a result, playing a lot of this music on this instrument is so illuminating because you really understand why composers made certain choices. And each fingering is different to the modern flute. It's, it's a different fingering system. And some notes, if they're forked, which means that one hole is open and the tube isn't closed anymore, if it's a forked fingering, the tone is much weaker than if it's strong when the tube is closed the whole way down. And so each note has its own unique color and sound. As technology developed and there was increased desire for chromatic fingerings and uh, better fingering possibilities, flute players experimented by adding new keys and new holes to the Baroque flute in order to make things easier for them. So this is the key that is from the Baroque flute, this one right here. And gradually people added extra ones. You know, first they added one extra key, so there were two, then three, then four. And by the time the classical period was happening, you had either six or eight keys. So its range is bigger, and also you can play notes much easier because you have all these extra keys and holes. Today we have this piccolo, which, as you can see, looks sort of like a hybrid between the Baroque flute or the classical flute and the modern flute. This is made of wood, but it has all these keys made of silver and has a similar mechanical system to the modern flute. One of the standards today is the alto flute, which you can see is quite a bit bigger than our modern flute, and it's pitched a fourth lower. Um, so it's a transposing instrument and is known for its absolutely gorgeous, sort of haunting sound. This is the bass flute and it's a lot less common, um, purely because of practicality, I think, and also because its range is pretty limited. Although it's pitched an octave lower than the regular flute, um, it has a much more diffused sound, so it's, it's much more difficult to hear. And you can see that its tubing is so long that the head joint has to curve all the way around so that the player can actually reach the keys.